A new device was just released that solves one very annoying problem that retro gamers often run into. How to connect consoles that output via a VGA-style D-sub connector to devices that have SCART inputs. Some of the most helpful tools aren't always the flashiest, but I love them just as much as the rest. So let's take a look at the HD15 to SCART adapter. Before we get into the video, I just want to make the point that this device does not change the resolution of the signal being fed through it. This isn't a downscaler that converts VGA to RGB, this is simply a device that passes the RGB signals from a D-sub connector through to SCART, with a switchable option to combine H and V-Sync into C-Sync. That's still a really necessary tool in most people's retro gaming setups, but I wanted to set expectations straight. Okay, let's start with a quick overview of how it works. This is a device designed by Tian Fong that's part connector adapter, part sync combiner. To start, the RGB and ground signals are passed directly through the D-sub connector without any conversion at all. Then a 3.5 millimeter jack allows audio to be routed and all of those signals are passed directly to the SCART output, converting the connector from D-sub to SCART. The only circuit in the adapter, and what sets this apart from other connector converters, is the sync combiner and sync attenuation. When set to VGA mode, the horizontal and vertical sync signals are combined via an XNOR circuit originally designed by Steve from HD Retrovision. This allows things like a Dreamcast's VGA cable to be used on a RetroTINK 5X. The next setting is RGBS mode, which passes the sync through a resistor that drops it to a voltage safe enough to be used with devices like the Mr.'s I.O. board on SCART equipment. Also, for cost reasons, this is a unidirectional device. It only works as a D-sub to SCART adapter, not the other way around. We are working on a device that goes in the reverse direction, but more on that later. Okay, let's check out some examples of this thing in action. I think one of the main uses for this device is connecting 480p VGA signals to SCART devices that can handle the higher resolution signal. The RetroTINK 5X is a perfect example. It doesn't have any VGA inputs, but has no problem accepting 480p signals. This device passes RGB right through, then combines sync into a level that's perfectly safe for all SCART devices. The creator of the Tink 5X, Mike Chi, also confirmed it's safe and should work fine with TV resolutions. PC resolutions may not work on the Tink 5X, but should be safe to try. Another great example are multi-format CRTs, as most only accept component video or RGBS. Using this device will convert RGBHV to a voltage-compatible RGBS that'll also work with pretty much all PVMs and some BVMs. As with the Tink 5X, resolution still matters, so make sure your source device is sending a compatible resolution to your target display. And speaking of compatibility, the HD15 to SCART is designed specifically for retro gaming equipment. That means if you're using PAL consumer grade CRTs, this most likely won't work, as it doesn't have voltage connected for the blanking pin. This is an open source project, so people can feel free to make a version specifically for PAL CRTs, but this one's probably not going to work. They will work on HDMI to VGA converters, though. Once again, you need to set your source to a resolution that's compatible with your target device, but you could use this for interfacing PCs to your multi-sync monitor, or even connecting your HDMI console to the Tink 5X's SCART input for downscaling. In fact, I used this to get most of the downscaling footage in the RetroTINK 5X launch video. Depending on your setup, HDMI to component might be a better choice, but if you need RGBS, this is a great solution. Here's one more interesting use for this device in VGA mode, the OSSC. Wait, what? Why would anyone use this when the OSSC already has a VGA input? Good question, and the reason is the OSSC's low-pass filter is only connected to the SCART and component video inputs, not the VGA. Sometimes this won't matter, but other times it could clean up a lot of interference. Here, check out the screen when a device is connected directly to the VGA input. Even though the OSSC says the low-pass filter is on, it's not affecting the VGA port at all. 
Now let's take a look through the SCART port. As you can see, the low pass filter makes a big difference. Depending on your source device, it might really benefit from sending it through the OSSC's SCART port instead of the VGA. The HD15 to SCART isn't just for VGA style signals though. There's actually plenty of equipment in the retro gaming world that outputs RGBS over a D-sub style connector. And the most common one these days? The Mister. That's right, with this device you could just use a cheap, shielded VGA cable and have an easy way to interface the Mister to SCART equipment. And it's perfectly safe. Something that can't be said for other supposed Mister SCART cables. Here's why. The Mister's analog I.O. board was designed to be as versatile as possible. It could output RGB, VGA, and component video all through the same D-sub connector. One downside of this though is the sync output needs to be TTL level voltage. If you're just going into an RGB monitor, that should be fine. Make sure to check your monitor's service manual to be safe of course, but while it should be fine for most RGB monitors, that voltage is much too high for SCART equipment. This attenuates that voltage to a level that's perfectly safe for all devices, including all PVMs and SCART equipment. I'll definitely be using this from now on with my mister, just because I don't have to worry about anything. As long as I grab one of these and a VGA cable, there's no safety issue. Whereas if I grab a VGA to SCART cable, I'm going to have to check to see if it's a pass-through cable or if there's one with a resistor in it. Now, there are reputable stores selling mister compatible SCART cables that include the resistor on the sync line, but some stores don't include it. That's right, there's sellers out there labeling their pass-through cables as safe for use with the mister, even though there's no resistor in them. Now, if you want to be safe, you could test a Mr. SCART cable without opening it at all by using a multimeter, or simply by popping the SCART head open and looking for a resistor. I'd personally not worry about it at all and just use one of these, but that's totally up to you. If you already own a Mr. cable, definitely pop it open or test to check if there's a resistor in it though. Oh, and this will also work with the Mister's HDMI direct modes via an HDMI to VGA converter like shown before. That's a great way for Mister users without an I.O. board to get lag-free, one-to-one RGB output. Just follow the instructions on RetroRGB to configure your INI file, and you'll end up with an RGBS signal that's properly attenuated for your SCART equipment. There is one small downside to the attenuation, though. Some custom RGB mods with D-sub outputs might have voltage that's too low. There's not much of a chance of this happening, but if you have a custom setup with a bunch of crazy adapters and this doesn't work for you, you'll need to recheck your setup. The best part is, there's no safety issue. As long as you're using properly built consoles and super guns, the worst thing that could happen is nothing. You just don't get a sync signal. And speaking of super guns, they're the next most likely place you'll run into a D-sub connector passing RGBS. Here's the Ashenworks JAMA Super Gun Mini, and like the Mister, it's usually safe to connect it directly to most RGB monitors, but not safe to directly connect it to SCART equipment. Using this device drops sync to a perfectly safe voltage and is an awesome way to connect the super gun to your display. Just a quick note, like with all super guns, don't crank the RGB levels too high or that could be a voltage concern. That has nothing to do with this device or the Ashenworks Mini, it's just a general super gun reminder. One last thing before I go. Since this is a unidirectional device, we're also working on one that goes in the opposite direction, SCART to D-sub and audio. Now, I don't think there's any need for a circuit in that one, just a pass-through, as there shouldn't be any safety issues, and while I don't think it's going to be nearly as popular as this, there are a few ways that I think people would benefit from it. Let me show a few examples. First, if you have a SCART switch, you could use this along with a cheap VGA to BNC cable to send video to your monitor. Depending on your setup, just buying a SCART to BNC cable might be a better option, but this option's here if you need it. Next, maybe you just want to use a VGA cable to go from your switch to your SCART device. I mean, it's always best to keep your analog cables as short as possible, but sometimes that's just not an option. In that scenario, it might be cheaper to get both of these adapters and a long-shielded VGA cable as opposed to buying a long-shielded SCART cable. 
Now, to be honest, I'm not even sure if the SCART to HD15 is going to be released as a product for sale or just as an open source product that people can make themselves. But either way, keep your eyes on RetroRGB.com because as soon as there's more info, I'll definitely post there. So to sum things up, if you have any D-Sub equipment in your setup, including and especially the Mister, I definitely recommend buying one of these. Now, of course, if you already have a fully wired setup that's running perfectly, you don't need to switch any of that out for this. But on the other hand, if you're a nerd like me that always likes good tools in your toolbox, this is also something you should seriously consider. Since this is an open source project, you can feel free to make your own, but it is not an easy installation. That is a really small circuit on there, and I had a hard time with at least one of those parts. Luckily, Greg from LaserBear designed the case, as well as a jig that makes things easier when you're soldering the SCART connector onto the circuit board. So that's available if you could 3D print your own, but it's still not something I would call an easy install. Well, that's it for this time. Please consider supporting this channel as all the work I'm involved in is funded directly by the retro gaming community through monthly or direct support services. Your help is keeping all of this stuff and the weekly podcast alive. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.